So the next kind of load balancing option that is available in Kubernetes, it's, uh, it's a, a type of service and it is called Noteboard. So in, in, if you remember in the previous uh, slides, I talked about internal client. You know, I specified that cluster IP is accessible only for, from within the cluster. Now, what if I want to expose my app outside of my cluster, you know, for, you know, uh, servers or laptops running outside of the cluster? How do we do that? So, Noteport is one of the options. So, Noteport does layer four load balancing. It provides the same kind of load distribution and version upgrades. And, you know, it is uh, exposed outside using a, a port or ports on all of the nodes. So what it means is, you know, let's say you decide to expose one application and, uh, um, you know, you, you ask Kubernetes to expose it as node port. Um, you know, there is a node port range that you can choose from when you're creating a cluster, just like the service IP, you specify uh, the port range. This is the default one, 30,000 to uh, 32,767. Uh, Kubernetes, you can either pick one of the ports from this range and Kubernetes uh, will allocate that to you if it is available, or you know you can let Kubernetes uh, assign a random port to you. Uh, you know under the hood, what Noteport uh, you know Noteport also uses cluster IP for the actual load balancing purposes. And unlike cluster IP, there is no service discovery uh, for this Noteport. You know we will see that in a moment. And uh, the good thing about uh, Noteport is, you know, it can be accessed from outside of the cluster. And if the node IPs are public, you can access it over the internet, or let's say, you know, you have a direct connect, um, you know, to your cluster from somewhere else, you can access uh, this Noteport app uh, application behind this uh, Noteport, or if you have a VPN and things like that, you know, there are a lot of underlying networking uh, setups that allow you to access uh, these uh, um, apps running in, inside your cluster, but you know the, the core concept is Noteport. All right. So just like uh, you know a cluster IP, you know we have an app. Um, you know in this example, I I call it uh, Bravo, and you know I have a service which looks very similar to the cluster IP. Uh, the main difference is line number eight, we specify the type of the service is called a node port. And here in line 11, I specified, hey, I want the node port. I, I, let me pick the node port 32,092. You know, if, if that port is available, Kubernetes will give that to me. Otherwise, it will give something, uh, some, some random port. If, even if I don't specify this node port, I will get a random port. Uh, allocated by Kubernetes. And how are these uh, connected? You know, just like uh, cluster IP, you know, we, we have the label selectors working from service to the deployment using the green, um, you know, arrows. And then we can see the, the target port and the container port linked uh, via the red line. And the internal clients can still access this particular service via the service name and the port. And the interesting thing here is like the external clients now can access this application using IP address of one of the nodes and the node port that has been assigned. So that's that's how the external clients uh, access it. So for the node port demo, you know, we, we have the same uh, Kubernetes cluster. We'll deploy uh, a, a different application, you know, here, let's call it bravo and then you know we have an external client which is my laptop and my cluster is running somewhere in the cloud and the node ip addresses are public so i can access it from the internet and then we will scale up the pod no we will not scale up the pod that's homework for you so you know the, the same kind of scenario that we did earlier you can try it out yourself uh, before we get on to the demo any questions um, there is a there is a node port question here, which is I've uh, from a Zach who asks I've read online that node port should be avoided in operations. We're planning to use ingress to route external traffic to our Kubernetes clusters. What are the benefits and features that node port provides that ingress does not? Excellent question. Uh, so, an ingress, uh, you know, that's the next uh, one of the uh, topics that I'm going to talk about. You know, just to answer this question in this context. 
an ingress can work only with http or https traffic now if you want to expose an application which is not a http or a https application basically it's not a web application let's say you have a database a mysql database or you have a mongodb that you want that you are running inside a cluster but you want to expose it outside of the cluster in that scenario an ingress is not going to solve your problem you need to have a node port running to be able to expose that application. So this is one of the perfect examples where you would have to pick Noteport. And if, if it is a web application, probably, you know, most likely uh, it makes sense to use an ingress. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, none on Noteport, so keep, keep going. Okay, cool. So let's uh, jump on to the demo. So let me pick the cluster, let me switch to the default project. And here, let me deploy a different application called Bravo. I want to run one part. I'm going to use the same IP. And here I'm going to use 9002. And here you can see I'm selecting Noteboard and here I'm leaving, uh, it, to, uh, leaving it up to the Kubernetes uh, orchestration to give a random port or if i want i could have clicked this and then asked for a port so in this case let me ask for a port i don't remember what i wanted to choose okay i wanted to choose 32092 32092 and then the environment variables i want to run my app on 9002 and here I want to specify, hey, show only B, and then launch it. Cool. So here, um, you know, you can see the part has been launched, and uh, you know, we, uh, you know, nobody is using 32092 port, so I got it. So if I click on this particular link here, it opens up my web application. So that's that's the part IP and you know the host name of this particular uh, part. So that's that's the uh, quick demo of how a Noteboard works. Now let's let's see or let's understand what else is going on underneath the covers. So if you look at this picture, right? You know, from uh, there are two objects that need to be created. One is the deployment, and the other one is a service, and from the UI from Rancher, you know, you just created only one workload and you know those two objects are created for you so if you want to look at the yaml files or you know the manifest files what you can do is click on this uh, menu here and you can click on view or edit yaml so this pulls up the manifest file or the yaml uh, file and you can see you know the spec for this particular part so this is very similar to what we have here and the other thing what rancher does in behind the scenes is it creates a service it's called bravo noteport automatically when you specified hey create a noteport for me and you can see the viewer edit yaml okay i'm not sure the i think i'm having the demo gods are not so happy something is wrong but you you'll be able to uh, see the manifest file for this particular um, uh, service. Let me try it a different way. If I can show it to you. So this is how you can launch the kubectl shell, and kubectl get service. All right, cool. Kubectl get service. Let me specify the name here, and I want to see that in a YAML fashion. All right, cool. So here you can see, you know, this is kind service here and where is a type i'm looking for okay cool so here is a type node port and you can see the node port 32092 all right so that completes the demo for node port couple, couple quick questions um sure. Marali, um from robert who asks if the dns is pointed to an ip of one node in a cluster does traffic get distributed across all the nodes with a node port or with ingress okay so um, 
I, I'm just thinking, should I answer this question right away or should I wait for uh, ingress, right? Okay, I'll answer it in the context of notebook. So if you have a C name pointed to a node, uh, you know, which is a DNS entry, and you try to access it, you are going to specify the node port. So now the node port is in the range of 30,000 to 32,000 or whatever you have configured on your cluster. That port is different from the ports used by your ingress. So there will not be a conflict. It, it's, it's very clear. If you are using a node port value when you're trying to access using the IP address, you are going to hit the node port. That's it. Okay, sweet. Um, one more question. Uh, is node port the same as port a port forward done by the command line? I do not think so. No, nope, it's, it's not the same. It's, it's a different thing. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, why don't you keep going? 